और सबको हिदायत है कि बीच बीच में सवाल पूछना So uh, I think that was a good break, and I think that's a good indication that uh, when we are discussing numbers, we do need some break, some human touch uh, in between when we are talking about numbers. Uh, because in the morning when Dr. Pan started talking, and you know he was giving certain examples of two pi r and perimeter and all, and all of a sudden I started feeling you know कि यार ये क्या concept discuss कर रहे हैं ये सब तो मुझे नहीं आता So I think it is we are still conditioned to uh, that math phobia. So let's try to understand it. Is, see, basically here um, I'm trying to make it uh, very simple, which all of us can understand as parents, as an adult, and which we can take it forward. You know, it should not remain here as a PPT or as a discussion, but if we can take it forward in making others understand. So I try to make it very simple to the uh, real life example. So let's see. And if you find anything related to the models which I'm explaining, please share your experiences because that is the best way to learn. Uh, I think there is all of us know what is math phobia all about. So it's basically uh, whenever a, a child starts feeling uh, anxiety, some kind of discomfort while dealing with numbers, uh, that is known as math anxiety. And if I say math phobia, so that means something like this that you hear the numbers and you say, oh my God, what is what are they talking about? Like you know, many a time, uh, even if I'm meeting adults and they are into some other job, but even if you tell Tell them that you make this bill or you enter like in school you enter these marks for a child. Um, this particular lady will always end up making some mistake because the moment I will say she will say number the problem. I will do I will end up making mistake. So whether it is counting of marks or attendance, some mistake will be done by because it is a number. So math phobia can remain with the uh, you know with the adults for their whole life. But it is very interesting that until 1972. Math anxiety and math phobia were not part of people's vocabulary. It's very interesting that one. So when you were in your in this uh, machine, there was no such word as math anxiety. And I think this is one thing I want to draw attention to that we are getting conscious mm-hmm. that math anxiety may come in the way of math learning. See, so far the assumption was if he doesn't learn math, he's a bad boy. Does not apply his mind. Is not serious enough. But that there is a phenomenon which comes in the way of learning. It's a very recent technology. Yeah, I think so. Maybe because uh, uh, there was a time when there was a boom in the, uh, you know, careers related to science and everything. So every parent wanted their child to pursue science, and science did mean math. So I think that became as a pressure from the society and from the parents, and you know, it started building up. And now we use math phobia so commonly, and sometimes as a defense mechanism. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm going to talk about this. That there is a difference between math phobia and uh, a low mathematical aptitude or a learning problem, a learning difficulty. And many times we equate all of them. Uh, we cannot equate all of them. As math phobia, we have already discussed. I'm very good at math, but just because certain Peers are associated with that. I start disliking, um, uh, you know, that particular subject. We will talk about it in a little more detail uh, later on. Uh, as far as low mathematical aptitude is concerned, you know, now when we are talking about multiple intelligence, uh, so some people might have good musical intelligence. Some people have good interpersonal intelligence. Some people have good numerical mathematical intelligence. So when we talk about different mathematic, uh, different types of intelligences, so one person might be good in one type of intelligence, might have, might be low on the other kind of intelligence. So when we say mathematical aptitude or numerical aptitude, that is more or less involved, right? So many times I have also seen that whatever effort you take, sometimes a child is not able to understand the basic mathematical concepts. Although of course it is a debatable issue because it all depends on the environment as well, which we will be talking uh, a little while. And uh, when we talk about the learning style, you know, uh, as far as learning styles are concerned, uh, all of us have a different kind of learning style. You know, some of us learn best by 
listening to people. Some of us uh, learn best by looking at the graphs and the diagrams and the flow charts. Some people learn best by writing it down. So whatever answers they write it down, they learn best. Some people, um, uh, they, they learn best by reading the text and by underlining and by highlighting you know, the text. So it depends on our learning style also, even if it is related to math. Because I've seen many students, again we will be discussing it a uh, little more in detail, uh, many students, they read math, they don't practice math. So, um, and, and you know, suppose if a, if a child's learning style is auditory, now how is he going to listen to math and learn? So we need to see, uh, you know, uh, those perspectives also that what kind of learning style mm -hmm. the child has. Can we teach math by using auditory learning style? I don't know, it's still a question. You know, maybe we need to be creative enough to teach math by using different kinds of learning style. And as far as um, uh, mathematical abilities are concerned, one very uh, pertinent uh, observation which I have made in school environment is, when students come to class 9, you know, till class 8, even if they are scoring low in math, as we were just discussing a while ago, they are still promoted. So, okay, chalo, pass ho gaya with 40%, still promoted, still promoted. The child comes to 9th and it's a task telling the uh, parent that your child maybe is not able to do 9th. Why don't you, you know, take something else because CBSE gives you attention, right? So, many a times, uh, you know, parents don't take it. And uh, maybe after first terminal, when the child is failing miserably in one exam, two exams, and then they say, okay. So then as a part of the policy, uh, school rule, we need to send the child for uh, assessment for the specific learning disability. And when they are assessed, of course, then they are assessed as this category. So what I have found, uh, you know, I started uh, having uh, one kind of senior teach program for these kids who were uh, scoring especially low in math and um, science. So what we used to do, my class 11 students who were scoring high and uh, according to teachers who know the mathematical concepts, they took up these students who were scoring low in math and after school we used to stay back for one hour, one and a half hours and they started teaching math to these students. So within a week's time, these kids gave me a feedback that math we don't know how to teach class 9 or class 10 concepts because we end up teaching them the division and the <coughs> multiplication of uh, decimals and fractions because the basic concepts are not clear. And out of these 10 kids, 3 more kids were uh, those who were assessed with this calculia. Now, here, you know, my mind started working that actually these people, these students are not suffering from any specific learning disorder. There are learning gaps. There are academic gaps which were there in the primary school which nobody bothered to fill up because the child was getting 40% or 33%, they just kept on promoting the child. And in ninth, surprisingly, when they are not doing well and then we are discovering this fact that the child doesn't know the basic concepts. So he doesn't have this calculi or low mathematical aptitude. Actually, he was never trained. Like I remember when I we used to learn tables. We just used to uh, sit under a tree and uh, it was a task towards the end of the day. Two ones are two, two twos are four in Hindi and till 12 you have to say. And till that time I did not know what does it mean. It was only when I started teaching my own son I understood what are these tables all about. Right? So these concepts, maybe when they were taught, the child was not clear that why, why is he learning these concepts or what is the logic behind it. So those concepts which he missed during the primary school, he could never learn it again because in the next class, there was a next challenge which he has to face. So that academic gap went on widely. And towards the end in ninth standard, we can't do anything else because we have to, the child has to sit for the exam also and we have to do registration also. So we are not left with any choice and I have to tell the child that you need math and take something else, maybe computers, maybe art, or maybe music. And that's really sad because I know the child is capable of it. So I think uh, whenever we are dealing with a child, it's very important to understand whether it is math phobia or mathematical aptitude. I have another case also where this child uh, uh, struggles, is struggling since childhood, you know, for math. But, uh, but the 
parents will not accept that you know numerical aptitude is not his cup of tea he is more good with the artwork you know so so again they they will say no no man is just scared at home he does everything he is scared of school he is scared of maths paper in school that's why he is not performing in the school we have a very active reduction maybe from class standard 1 standard 2 
I know it already. You know, I have strong belief system. So we say that if you think this way, you are going to act and feel the same way. If it affects the way you are going to feel. If I feel anxious about it, because I know I'm going to fail, so of course I will be anxious about it. And if I become very anxious, over anxiety, then remember that graph, performance will come down. Right? So uh, also emotion. So what what we feel affect how we think and be. So I feel very uh, irritable as soon as my math teacher uh, you know enters the class, right? So I, I feel very uh, scared. Now again she is going to give me a score, and again you know I will be ridiculous in the in the class. Kisi to kuch nahi aata math mein. So because I'm already so anxious. So I start believing that I will not be able to perform. So the moment it comes, again remember that graph, performance will come down. Right? Goes on to behavior. Now behavior can be anything because uh, uh, maybe I don't practice like I was giving an example. I have seen and actually I have seen students read math, they don't practice math. That is one major reason which I have seen which is leading to low performance in math and majority of students are dropping math either after 10th or after 8th because they feel that they can write After 8th also they can drop? Yes, yes. Drop According to CPSC, they, they give exemptions. So if a person has been diagnosed with dyscalculia, then uh, uh, they are given either uh, fundamentals of information technology or e-publishing or Einstein or R or Moodle. So, uh, so if I if I'm not practicing at all, so that will affect because I'm not practicing, I'm not anxious at all about my performance, and I think that's let's change it. So all three are very, very closely related. And whenever we talk about CBT or dealing with math phobia, especially, we have to focus on all three. We just cannot focus on one. Ki practice both karo, practice achhe se karo, you will be able to deal with it. No. You have to deal with the thought system also. Again, I cannot say ki have a positive belief, be positive, you will be able to uh, get good marks because by believing only it will not work, you have to practice also. <laughs> and and for feeling part, for feeling part, I have to give those uh, moments of accomplishment to the child so that the child feels happy about it. So when I work with all three, only then my will work. Yes, sir. Is it something this model which you uh, describe in here? Is it something that is specific to maths or any any particular subject? CBT can be applied to anything. This is the most popular one in today's world, right. which is effective. Right. And why I am coming down to that? And can you also say when was this theory formulated? Which year? And I am coming to that. Uh, this was I think almost 1920. I have learned that from you. <laughs> Generally, I used to write just like that, you know. Yesterday night when I was looking at it, I said, oh my god, I have not written when was it introduced, you know. Uh, because I like when Professor Pant introduces, because then it gives you a context of understanding. <laughs> yes. We have been living for thousands of years. It's only now that we appreciate mass anxiety going to either. Right? How long for the mass product is in a hungry The other thing I was very curious about, this is our theory of Ashirwad and Shraf. See, if you look at it, it says Ashirwad and Shraf. You look at Ashirwad, that thing starts having confidence, feels that you have to do it. And I will come down to that too. But if that's not what I will do, she has left already with the power. So, this is what we, uh, just, I just explained. So, this is just a pictorial, uh, people who are visual learners, it is a pictorial representation. That uh, if you are feeling low, depressed, uh, it will. Uh, so I'm feeling low that I'm not able to do math. It is leading to a thought I have let down my parents. And I tell you, this is so common. And specifically, um, uh, one child, uh, the father is uh, a math professor, uh, and the sister, the elder sister, is also economics professor in MIT, and he's not able to do math in ten. So you know. I, I can't tell you how depressed he feels that, you know, they have so much of expectation. I'm the only boy after three sisters and I'm not able to do that. So that is recipient genes. So it's not nominated. So, so but that, that effect, that effect 
Just to add one thing, like uh, there, there is an ethnic difference also when you go to tuition, right? Teacher might, uh, teacher at tuition might tell you a different technique. Mm -hmm. Like for my daughter in class one, uh, when she was in prep, she was taught adding uh, addition, subtraction, and pretty much. Now she uh, came to class one. The teacher has changed uh, the way she taught things. Like there is a new teacher and she is uh, teaching it. Mm -hmm. She sometimes gets confused. I feel we we need to just uh, get to one technique only, or like we need to understand aspects and then teach that to the students. Actually, what teachers do is not technical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's such a technical. Yeah, because because at the later stage it becomes uh, in the more same problem. School, also, no? In the same school, like uh, when the teachers change, they they have different techniques. Right? It can be both ways, as Madam is saying. Sometimes maybe the, when the teacher changes. And also, the tutor is teaching in a different way, and in school it is taught in a different way. Yeah. So, if the child uh, solves the problem in a different way, he is awarded zero because they say that no, they are not. Um, because that becomes a you know issue also for the teacher. That that means you are not listening in my class. You are paying more attention to your tutor, and uh, not in the class you, you are using her method and not mine. You know, then a power clash can also come. <laughs> Okay, we talked about uh, this a little later. First, let me talk about the theories. Uh, why I'm saying theories? Because uh, when we are talking about CBT or cognitive behavior therapy, and as I said, it is a combination of both cognitive therapies and behavior therapies. And when we say cognitive therapy and behavior therapy, let's try to understand what is it all about. So let's start with the behavior theory. Now, when we talk about the heuristic model of explaining human behavior, they follow a one basic assumption that all behavior is learned and whatever is learned can always be unlearned. This is one tagline for behavioristic model. So if according to them this definition, that means math phobia is also learned and whatever is learned can always be unlearned, that means this math phobia can also be unlearned. Now when we talk about the behavioristic model, there are different psychologists have uh, work, uh, worked on uh, this behavioristic model and they have given their own theories of learning that is different ways of learning. So one of the ways which is very famous is uh, classical conditioning. I don't know how many of you have heard of it. Uh, this was proposed by Ivan Pavlov, who was a Russian physiologist. And uh, from 1849 to 1936. So um, uh, I think this experiment was done uh, around 1920. Just about 100 years ago. Yes. The source of Just imagine. That's what I'm trying to say. Even the word stress, uh, you know, we never used to use. You know, now it is so common. Uh, if you talk to any child, you know, immediately they will say, uh, you have depression or that. So, you know, just take me away from this particular job because I'm under depression. Change my section, no, I'm, I'm under, under depression. The most important subject. <laughs> In the present scenario, but you Uh, family member. So 
So those associations, now this is also learning. Nobody taught us, nobody trained us to do this. We just learn. Hmm? In movies, we see that they go to the mountains or go to the pregnancy environment in the environment and you know, the hero is saying, oh my god, you know, he remembers something. So because that pregnant, that place gets associated with certain feelings. Sometimes we feel that it doesn't look good here because such and such thing happened here. So we make associations. We make associations between, uh, with, with the people also. That today we have seen something in the morning. Or today we have seen something good in the morning. Right? So we make associations. This is my um, uh, you know, lucky sari or this is my lucky pen. So we make, in, in our daily life we all make associations. So this is, uh, although he talked about uh, classical conditioning and association running such a long time back and uh, we, it is such a part of our life that, you know, it's sometimes hard to understand that it can be a theory also, right? So this Russian physiologist, basically he was working on digestive system of dog. So what he found that whenever he was entering that laboratory and um, uh, even, uh, you know, to study the system, and uh, he, he made a very uh, small uh, operation, surgery, and so that the dog saliva could be collected. So what he used to see that even if he is going there with his notepad to make certain, uh, you know, observations, the do dog was salivated. So he got a little uh, curious to know why is it so. So he, although he was a physiologist, but he just wanted to study that. So on the basis of that whole, uh, experiment and that one experience he designed the whole experiment and he gave a theory which we see is so applicable uh, you know uh, in our daily life. Now let's apply it to the maths book right. So it says uh, before conditioning neutral stimulus no response. So suppose Jeshika is here so maths no response it is a part of the subject. Jeshika uh, one two three six years could make huh? Or you can learn ABCD, do you have fun to learn both things? So right now there is no association. It is just like another subject, right? So it is neutral. No response. Everything is saying, she is wondering why she is asking me a question. Now let me ask this question to uh, maybe a child uh, who has taken up e-publishing instead of math. I will get a different kind of response. So what happens? So as the child goes, maybe uh, till 5, my child was getting full marks in math now. I don't know what happened in 6. So maybe in 6, maybe the teaching methodology, maybe the concept was not very clear to him or whatever. So that math subject becomes the, uh, becomes the standard for getting any kind of appreciation from the teacher. Or it becomes the, uh, uh, the criteria for getting scolding from the teacher. So then this math becomes associated with scolding. This math becomes associated with low performance. You know, we were just discussing in the morning that all math teacher are, teachers are regarded as Hitler or very, uh, very strict. Now, these are all associations which we have made during these years. Now, it's not written in any book. Who says um, chemistry teachers are not uh, strict? My chemistry teacher was very strict. We used to uh, uh, hit teachers, uh, sorry, uh, students, if they are not able to give the correct answer. PE teachers are also very strict, but nobody talks about it. Everybody talks about only math teacher being strict. So these are the associations. So math gets associated with the teacher or the subject because that is associated with failure, the unconditional response, right? So what happens? Looking at the teacher only or looking at the math paper only arises that fear. So, so here, otherwise math as a subject doesn't induce anything. But the moment these associations are being made during the school years, because the child is consistently performing low and getting some kind of preaching from the parent or some kind of scolding from the teacher or maybe he is comparing himself with others in the class. So these two things get associated and math start inducing that fear, get associated, right? That it happened uh, with my own son, uh, till fifth, sixth, he was scoring well, but uh, one teacher 
uh, something happened and he stopped liking the teacher and i could never uh, you know make him uh, do math after class 10 it was it was a uh, achievement that after 10 i'm not supposed to uh, do math although the the teacher in class 10 used to wonder that ma'am i feel that he is good in math because the problems which others are not able to do he will solve that problem but very common very basic thing he will just keep sitting he will not be able to do so because maybe i think those associations were made and that can be done with any subject for that matter this happens with cooking also like at home mm -hmm. i have to be able to make very good atta mm -hmm. which is a little bit complicated but i can't make simple aloo <laughs> Right. So we will talk about it. 